So I just hit $40,000 profit target objective of the $400,000 phase one challenge that I am doing with the Funday Trader program. And in this video, I am going to show you that how I completed my phase one of the $400,000 challenge program. So if you are new to the channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell. So you will be notified when I will upload more videos like this in the future. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So here you can see my account balance is now at $440,000 and it took me around 20 days to make $40,000 which is 10% of the $400,000. It took me around 20 days to make that money. About two weeks ago, I published this video, the Funday Trader $400,000 challenge in which I talked about that how I made over $20,000 profit which is 5% of the $400,000 account in around 10 days. And it's been around two more weeks and I only took one more trade since then and that trade made me complete my $40,000 profit objective or 10% profit objective of the challenge that I am doing with the Fundy Trader. So it's the episode number three of the $400,000 challenge series and I will show you that how I completed this challenge, what strategy I used to pass the challenge and how I am going to pass the phase two of this challenge. So just for the proof, let me show you the certificate that I got from the Fundy Trader after completing the phase one of the challenge. Here you can see the moment I completed the phase one, I got this email. Dear Ajwad, congratulations on the successful completion of phase one. You killed it. We are now reviewing your phase one account for any violation, which I did not violate by the way. Once you pass the review, your phase two account will be prepared and you will receive your login credentials in another email within the next 48 hours. You will find your certificate in another email for successfully passing phase one. Please share it on your social media and tag the Fundy Trader. So this is the challenge that I am doing with the Fundy Trader program. I took the standard challenge and I went with the swing account. And in this account, I had the challenge leverage of one to 60. My account balance is obviously $400,000. I had to make $40,000, which is 10% in 35 days. And I have done this objective already. Now I will move to phase two account. And in that account, I will be given 60 days to make only 5% which is $20,000 without violating 6% daily drawdown limit or $24,000 daily drawdown limit and overall drawdown limit will be $48,000. So basically on phase two, I will get 60 days to make only $20,000 without violating $24,000 daily drawdown limit and overall $48,000 maximum loss limit. All the risk parameters, all the objectives are the same except the profit target objective in phase two. In phase one, I had to make 10%. In phase two, I have to only make 5%. So I highly recommend that if you want to become a Funded Trader, go with the Funded Trader program. I have also added the 5% discounted code link in the description. So this was the trade, the only trade that I did after the second episode. I took a shot on Euro US dollar from the higher time frames, and this was the trade. I entered a sell position from here. I exited at this area and my stop loss was above these rejections area and it made me around $20,000 from this trade. I went with a little bit higher risk as I was already up 5% profit in first 10 days of starting the challenge. So I decided as this trade had a higher chance of going into my favor. So I decided to take this trade with a little bit higher risk. So I went with almost 2% risk and I ended up making 5% from this trade. So let's talk about why I took this short trade because I want to share the strategy with you that will help you pass the challenges every single time. So as you can see that we had this impulsive big movement from here to here we created this lower low area and it's a one hour time frame from this area we started to make a pullback when we were creating a pullback look what we did we first made this movement then sellers came down then buyers tried again sellers came down now here is the key point that you always need to remember for us to buy we need sellers in the market for us to sell, we need buyers in the market. If the overall trend is for the sellers, as we can see, the overall trend is going for the sell side for a very long period of time. That means we only need to focus on the selling. If the overall trend is for the sell side, then we will only sell. We will wait for the pullbacks from buyers and then we will take the sell position whenever we get a chance. So I did the same thing here. When we created this lower low, we started to have a rejection at this area. It means the buyers are coming in the game because there can be no sellers without buyers. So we need buyers first so we can sell. So when we could not make a lower low from this area, look what we did. We made a huge movement to the downside. 
Now, this movement, it is a kind of movement that really turned people into the wrong side of the direction. People who were thinking that it is a sell, now they are confused after looking at this big movement on the one hour time frame. They think that now, as we have broken this level of resistance, right here now they think the market is now going for the buy side we could not break this lower low area and we have also broken this resistance level and we want people to think that it is going for the buy side so we can sell so from this area market made a movement we created this higher high and i am going to put a line here we created this higher high the sellers made a movement towards this resistance that they broke very very recently they tested it and they started to go up now compare this movement from here to here to this movement from here to here just compare that how well the buyers went from here to this area they had a pretty good momentum in that and now compare this movement look at this movement from here when buyers they started to make a movement they are taking a lot of struggle to go up towards the same area so they took a movement to the upside then sellers came down they tried again sellers came down they tried again sellers came down so they are taking a lot of time to cover the same distance to reach to the same level from where we started to make a movement to the downside when buyers made a big movement to the upside so this gave me an indication that yes the sellers are still in control as the buyers they have no momentum they have no control in the momentum whatsoever so when these sellers they made this movement i started to wait for the market to give me one more rejection i wanted the market to come towards this area as we are unable to cross this level the high that we created from this big buyers movement and we are still in the overall sellers market not only that we have also reached this small supply level that we never really tested before so we are near to this key area of supply and we are unable to break this high that we made from this big movement to the upside so what happened the buyers they started to make a movement to the upside again now look at this movement we can clearly see the difference between this movement from here to here to this movement from here to here and this movement from here to here the third movement that we started to get from here it is clearly a lot weaker than the previous two movements so that is also a great sign for us because we want to sell so when the market was making a movement to the upside a very small higher high and higher lows in that we tried to cross this area again this high level we failed here and we have also tested this fly area right here as you can see we came into that supply area and we got rejected the moment we got rejected i just waited for the market to clear this level of support and resistance this small resistance right here which became a support which then also became a support the moment we cleared it to the downside i entered for the sell position as i know that we are never going to be able to cross this level of high that we created after this big movement we tried two times and we failed every single time and we also got rejected from this supply level so I put my stop loss just above the rejections area and my target at this lower low area that we created after the big movement to the downside. So that was my trade and that was my thought process behind taking this trade. It made me over $20,000 profit. Yes, it took almost two days for this trade to hit the take profit, but it's fine. Trading is a game of marathon. This is how I completed my phase one profit objective, which was $40,000. Now, what is my plan? To complete the next phase which is phase 2 in which I have to make $20,000 profit in 60 days or 5% profit in 60 days. I am going to keep it as simple as possible. The moment I will receive the login credential for phase 2, I will start working on that. I will wait for the opportunities to arrive as there is no rush. We have 60 days to complete phase 2. So there is no rush. We have a lot of time. I will not be over leveraging over risking in order to pass the phase two in the shortest period of time possible because that will be way too risky if i do that if i try to complete the phase two in shortest period of time possible i will literally blow my account so i'm not going to do that i will have 60 days to make five percent only and i will consume my time i will take my time to reach my profit target the next very important part is that on every single trade i will be only risking one percent per trade as the profit target objective is very small so there is no need for me to risk two percent on any trade i will keep it very simple i will keep it with a lot of minimal risk only one percent risk on every single trade no matter the result whether i make two percent from that trade whether i make three percent from that trade 
or whether I lose that weight because losing is also a part of the game. The next most important thing that I am going to keep in mind when I will be doing phase two of the challenge is that I will let my winners run. This is the common mistake that a lot of traders make. When there is an opportunity in the market, that will have a lot of potential to be a large winner. So why would I close it? I will let my winner run. I will try to maximize my profit from that trade because the larger the winner, the fewer trades we will take in order to make the profit objective. So I hope that you guys got a lot of value out of this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section and also let me know if you need anything that is going to help you pass the funding challenges. So thank you for watching guys. I will see you in the next video. Peace.